No, yeah, Jeremy. No. Jeremy doesn't. Jeremy doesn't fit into my family at all. Jeremy is not related to me. Jeremy, he's really like he might be some fifth cousin or something. Like like maybe his great grandmother is like is like mother's in law with like my great grandfather or some crazy shit like that. But like, I'm not I'm not related to that semi retarded, rotten toothed individual. Nice a guy as he is, not part of that bloodline. Probably. So all of you PKA people out there, as you know, and as I said in the video, you know, we're always talking about what would happen if, if we if somebody was in a chokehold or, you know, MMA stuff. And one of the things that had come up many times was Wing saying basically that even that that if he was put in an, into an advantageous enough position that he could beat Woody, and the position that, that he thought he could win in was one in which he was behind Woody, had him in a chokehold, had the chokehold set in, and then you said go. And it kept so, evolving, right? Like it started with two men six feet apart facing each other, <laughs> and then it started with like you know him having my back. And then it started, then it went to like him having my back with his elbow under my throat, sunken choke. Mm-hmm. And it kept it kept building until finally he agreed. Yeah, if you give me all those advantages, I think I can do it. <laughs> and while I did not have Woody at hand, I did have Jeremy. And I, th I think Jeremy's a pretty decent replacement. They're similar height. Jeremy's more heavy set than than Woody is. Stronger. He's stronger. But Woody has some advantages that Jeremy doesn't have as well. So I thought it was going to be a fair comparison, and I think it was. And uh, so if you'd like to see it, go go to YouTube.com/fps and check it out. Wings, I'd like your thoughts first. Well, my initial thoughts is I have very limited physical fight training. Very little, little to none. Uh, my, my thoughts are going to be mainly that I've been choked before, and I know it saps a lot of your energy. And I feel like I can get the chokehold on, and I can clinch it on. If I can do that, he can't support my weight, and he's going to go down to the point where he can't fight no more, and he's going to tap out. Okay. Jeremy, I think you're going to get rid of his grip, you're going to get back to your feet, and then you're going to show us all what you really are. Pretty much. All right. Get behind him there. <laughs> and begin. What are you, Jeremy? Show us what you are. <laughs> Damn right. I'll give it away. Jeremy, uh, Jeremy snakes out of the chokehold and <laughs> And, uh, and, and is ready to literally kill Wings. He's, you know, he gets up, Wings is still on the ground, he's behind Wings, and he kind of pats Wings on the back as kind of a way of saying, gotcha, and Wings hops up, he's like, I was about to hop you see up his face? the nuts. You see his face? Yeah, Wings like, I beat him. See how red his face is? <laughs> yeah. Jeremy's mouth isn't even open, he's breathing through his nose, and he's just like, huh? I got her, look at his face. <laughs> look at his face? What does that even mean? <laughs> you see how red he is? <laughs> How ready he is! He was about to fucking put the coup d'etat on you. Oh no, I would have came up and kicked him right in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't aware that I just lost a fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally uninformed. He's getting new teeth, by the way. Little Jeremy. Really? Some, Jeremy's, um, facades he's getting or... every single tooth pulled. Every single one. Not, not, not leaving one behind. No one's getting left behind. Um, I'm, I, I need to talk to him. I haven't spoken to him about this. I've only heard about it from like a friend of his and mine. Uh-huh. Get them all pulled out, and I think he's getting dentures at first because you know a full set of implants is like fifty thousand dollars or something. Right. Thirty if you get some if they're wood, and yeah. you know twelve <laughs> if you go to Mexico. Uh, that's pretty much the price scale with fake teeth. But um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope I can get a hold of him before this procedure happens because I want the teeth. Okay, I want them. <laughs> I want his whole set of chompers, and I, I won't touch them or anything, but I want to display them to you guys because I think if the fans They're, ever saw what his teeth look like, they would like, like, I think, I don't read any comments ever, but but I would imagine there are people who think I'm too hard on Jeremy or I'm cruel to him or mean about his, like, bad, rotten teeth, but if you ever saw him, you'd be like, oh, well, I see. The clown he, from he, It. He had things living in his mouth for the last generation, it seems, because they're green and black and brown and and colors that, that happen like how did they get green and black and brown i don't so, understand that so um he, he he claims and based on nothing but just his own reasoning that it's because he drank lots of red bull the truth is i think that there are people who are who have soft teeth the enamel is very soft and it can be corroded away by sodas and, and poor treatment 
And I think that he corroded off all the enamel off of his teeth early in life with sugar, uh, soda, and not brushing, and lots of chewing tobacco. And and so they started degrading away, chipping away. And, and so his, his front teeth here that are supposed to be basically flat rectangles for the most part are look like car keys in that they've got this like serrated edge on all three of the exposed edges of the teeth. You know, one edge is up, obviously in your gums and then there's a side to the tooth and there's a bottom to the tooth. And the sides and the bottom of every tooth in the front that are the, the you know, the rectangular ones, the, the, the incisors and stuff, um, is like a car key because of the corrosion and the erosion around them. They don't fit together anymore. And the ones in the back are all shattered and broken. And so it was just like, yeah. That's really sad. He didn't seem to mind. Um, but but I remember one time, like, they were telling me that, like, he just had met this chick and, like, kind of hooked up with her. Like, first night, they've known each other. And they're over there just really making out. He's, the, ah, he's, he's just really exploring her mouth with his tongue, going to work on her over there. And then that all wraps up. And then a third individual asks the girl, you know, how you like Jeremy? Yeah, he's okay. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I just met him. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's like, um, how can you do that, though? She's like, what? How can you kiss him with his teeth, you know, the way they are? And she goes, what way are they? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, look. And she looks. And right about that time, he, like, laughs. And he goes, <laughs> and she just goes pale, just pale as a ghost because she saw what she'd had her mouth inside of for like the last 15 minutes. You know, tongues moving around in there. Look, I know a guy who was, at, who was at a concert, met a girl, wanted to hook up with her. Obviously, there's nowhere to go except the porta potty Oh, no. That, oh. that is the biggest turnoff in the world. <laughs> Jeremy fucked this girl in a porta potty oh. with people waiting in line. <laughs> It's a concert. You know how porta potties are at events. You know, when it's yeah, ridiculous, oh, and they cool. are disgusting. You know, this isn't like the the porta potty you see like at a construction site that's been going for one day or something. This temporary porta potty that's okay to run into really quick. No, this is a dreadnought porta potty. This is danger mode. This is event mode. And this and is there a break glass when eating pussy porta potty. They went in. No, not that though. They went in. There, they went they went in there and banged it out of the porta potty, mm. and everybody knew. You know, they, they you have to come out with the other person. You know, there's no way to like magic show. <laughs> yeah. like, like you're not gonna David Blaine your way out. Of this. <laughs> like you're gonna come out, close the door behind you, and then somebody's gonna be like, you know, okay, my turn. Wait, no, there's more. Like and be surprised. Like that is not how it works. I like I, I like watches. I've always liked watches. Uh, I've got a few watches. Uh, the ones that Jeremy didn't steal. I'm almost positive he stole my watches. Bastard! So, I'm pretty. You whenever some there's some five roll, roll roll seed balls too. under his house Did he foundation. Take those? He didn't get the very expensive watch or the mildly expensive watch, but I'm pretty sure he took a uh, like a four hundred fifty dollar watch. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a Luminox. Uh, Luminox makes these like military watches, mm-hmm. um, uh, but they're but they're really nice. And uh, I had like a five hundred dollar one. It just it doesn't just go missing. That's not the sort of thing that I just misplace. And I had a kind of a nice Movado that was like eight hundred dollars. That's also missing. Um, but the two nicer watches, those are those are in a drawer uh, somewhere. Um, but I'm pretty sure whenever I like do like an inventory of things that you know you don't touch every day, mm-hmm. uh, and I see something's gone, I'm like, I bet Jeremy stole that. Pretty sure Jeremy stole that. I had some shooting glasses. Uh, I don't remember the company, but one of the higher end companies. And they're like the claim to fame on these shooting glasses certainly wasn't their style because I never wore them because I, I thought they they looked bad. They looked like the old school Oakleys, and that like you look like um, PC principal when you fucking wear them. So they're just lame, and I I, I always knew they were lame. And uh, but their thing is they could stop a twenty two bullet. Mm. Like someone could shoot you in the eyeball with a fucking twenty two, and they bing and just b- fucking or bounce lots off. Lots of bullets and I, if they're ricochets. Sure. And I always thought, and like, so when if I was doing something really dangerous, I was like, protect my peepers here and, mm-hmm. and, and throw these bad boys on. And uh, I remember my cousin was like, Did you give Jeremy some of those glasses that you had, those, those really cool ones that, that stop bullets? And I was like, No, nah, I only had the one pair. The, the, they just sent me the one pair and, and a little money, you know. And, and he, he's like, 
he was at Walmart the other day and he was bragging all about how they stopped bullets and he was wearing them. And I was like, that motherfucker. <laughs> He's such a thief. He had a weird way of stealing, though. It'd be like, hey, you know, can I, can I borrow your 1911? Yeah. All right. I'll give it back if you remember you gave it to me. Yeah. Yeah, you got to remember. You got to remember that it, and you got to hunt him down. He won't uh-huh. give it up. Like, like I, I yeah. won't retell all the stories, but like he's gotten, he would borrow stuff from my cousin that was brand new. Like my cousin just had bought a camping tent. He hasn't, he, he, he hadn't been camping yet. It was still like perfectly in that, like that, that, that like big, packing, uh, yeah, you know? the factory packaging that, that you never get it back into. Right. And it was like a six man tent or something like that. Scott has not gone camping with it yet. And Jeremy's like, all right, man. Jeremy has rotten teeth and a speech impediment. That <laughs> it, 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 and it, hey, man, how about let me borrow that? Borrow Jeremy you. is one of Kyle's henchmen, oh. Mysterious. He, he, he is absolutely one of my henchmen. I'm going to say, this guy sounds like he's more trouble than he's worth. He's beefy, Why though. Why are you hanging out with a literal he's, thief over here? He carries things well. He's a, Kyle's got a very oh. short bench. He's like the Sunny crew. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> look. This guy is beefy as fuck, and he is willing to do some fucked up shit for a dollar, all right? I had this guy holding a zombie target one time with with a pound of explosives in it on the end of a stick, and not a long stick. Like, like he's just... And, like, in a video, there's a part where I'm like, yeah, we had a good day today. I shot, you know, this and that, and I shot four zombies, and then I go, wait a minute, one, two, three. I only shot three zombies, and that's Jeremy's cue to stick to like he's hiding behind a rock like Wiley e. Coyote to like raise a zombie uh. and I'm like aha there it is and I flick and shoot the thing out of his hands and it explodes because there's a pound of explosives in it he's just holding the thing on a stick about this long like 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 a three foot stick or something like that <laughs> you can't pay for that kind of loyalty about two weeks now I didn't want to travel all the way out here to make this video but uh, we did it anyway we had lots of fun and uh, we shot, you know, the five zombies, we shot uh, the uh, beer, and wait a minute, it's four zombies. When he's holding that target in his arm, in his hand, <laughs> that, I shoot, that explosive target that I shoot out of his hands, ah, oh, I was showing that to dad the other day. He's like, what if it had driven the stake through his body? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a distinct possibility, but I was willing to take that risk on behalf of Jeremy. I remember literally thinking that, like, like I know what explosives do to some extent. Like, I have a good mind for, like, okay, if we put the explosive here, that door is going to blow off. Or if we put it right here, it's going to blow a chunk out of this tree. But I had no idea what happens when a man holds a stake with an explosive charge at the end of it, and I shoot it out of his hands. I had no fucking clue. This guy's no, day job, if I recall, watches. was to hold two five-gallon buckets, right? And he worked at a place where there were like hundreds of thousands of chickens. So you get, you know, 100,000 chickens, some chickens die. And he would just walk through the chickens and grab the dead ones and load up these, like, buckets. And they're heavy, right? It gets to be like 30 pounds an arm full of dead chickens. All day. All yeah, day. He's just doing farmer's walks all day, which yeah. is a workout that will make you incredibly strong. Jeremy was very beefy, uh, very strong. He still is, I guess. You know, he's, uh, he's a hard-working guy, not the smartest uh, knife in the drawer. Get out. But, uh, <laughs> you know, willing to do some shit. You know, you tell him to do something, and he'd do it. And a little bit of peer pressure, and he'd go to the next fucking level. Like, like if, if there's something that's, like, really dangerous, and it's like, oh, I don't really want to do that, man. Every, we all jump in. Ah, you pussy. Remember that time that Joe did this, and Pete did that, and Scott did this? Those are real, man. He, next thing you know, he's like, all right, well, all right, I've got the bomb. <laughs> Where do you want me to put it? <laughs> Jeremy would travel the country with me and, and, do, and, and do all kinds of <laughs> manual labor. In return, I paid for everything he needed and took him on a crazy fucking adventure, right? You know, he's in a five-star hotel, you know, or, or the next day he's, you know, like getting to meet some supermodels or the next day he's getting to, like, drive a, a race car or something, you know, or fly in a helicopter and you know, hey, that, that's that's what he does. But Wait, in return is this job available? Because <laughs> because I can uh I can, you can do be a this Jeremy? and not yeah. Uh, well I guess I won't be a human target for your human explosives target practice. 
Well, that's not going to do them because that's what I'm looking for. You don't yeah, sound yeah. qualified oh, that's to be a henchman. Pretty good. <laughs> I, I, with the uh, the first time that Dick came on the show, I remember we were talking about FPS Russia, like the the videos on that channel and like the not like the, all the crazy shit and everything. And yep. Dick unironically like responded like, "Oh yeah, that that guy was crazy or something." And I remember I said like, "You you realize that that Kyle is FPS Russia, right?" <laughs> and Dick was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Do you know uh, who I'd like? Going crazy. Uh, yeah. That Matt from Demolition Ranch. Do you guys know him? Yeah. You, you've probably seen his videos. Uh, he, he's he got a couple. He's got a daily vlog now where he shows himself and his family. But he first got big by running a gun channel where he'd shoot things in his on his ranch. And he's also a veterinarian. FPS Russia? That no, guy? That's me. <laughs> that's Kyle. Uh, he's similar <laughs> to FPS Russia, though. And... Um, uh, I don't know. I watch his stuff now and then. I don't watch every video he puts out, but I enjoy his content. He seems like a neat guy. So he might be my current dream guest. I'd like a Bill Burr. That'd be great. Mm. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Dick, you you knew that uh that Kyle is FPS Russia, right? Oh, With all the guns and whatnot. It's I think I've probably watched that more than any other online video, except for those gallon smashing kids. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, later on Twitter, he admitted, like, I got called out so hard, I had no idea that guy Kyle was FPS Russia, and I played it off going, yeah, knowing that what I said previously didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That was fucking hilarious. You had no idea you were FPS Russia. Yeah, Jeremy was perfect for that that little position that I that I had him in, you know? It, it, he'd fight, and, it, you know, it could be a boring day sometimes, regardless of what you might see on uh, on, on the screen. And he would always liven that up by being a dumbass, by just being a dumbass. We're at this place in Houston where, like, we're we're with the owners of this massive gun store there. And it's sort of this partnership where one guy's the financier and the other guy is the day-to-day management. And both of these guys have taken us out on this incredible adventure where they have this special permission to hunt pigs in neighborhoods of Houston with night vision goggles and machine guns at night. Any means necessary is what the sheriff has written on this form. How and- hard? is it to kill these pigs that they need night fishing? What are these super pigs or something? Yeah, the rock you don't get slime. ahead in life setting up fair fights, Asterios. Ah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we, what we do is we drive around. The, the lights are all cut off in our trucks. We're in two vehicles and, and we're, we're quiet, right? We don't want to scare the pigs away. We're trying to sneak up and see, oh yeah, they're in that field. Let's pull to the side of the road step off the side of the road and nope. shoot them really quick and quietly. <laughs> so when you close the car doors, you, you don't slam them, right? You sort of do that thing where you push the car door closed and then give it a little little quick shove to like clickety-click. Well, the day-to-day management guy who's running this gun store, and he's kind of our like go-to guy for supplying us with the machine gun that we're using that day, and he's driving us around. He's standing there with his hand on his truck, Jeremy slams the truck door on this guy's four fucking fingers. And it doesn't just slam on them. It slams and latches all the way. Oh, and, God. And it's in such an awkward angle that he can't get his other hand over to open the door because of where he was standing when it happened. And he's just like, arr, 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 until somebody lets him the fuck out. And when they, and it's dark, so I can't tell how bad it is. And I'm thinking like, I've slammed my hand in a door before. It's not that bad. Chill out. He's a, <laughs> oh, no. he's a guy, and I'm thinking this guy's being a pussy. So Make we like cringe. Oh. We drive down the road to like where there's street lamps and stuff, and we all like park our trucks beside each other. And we're having a conversation through the windows, and he goes, "Yeah, it's pretty bad." He holds his hand up, and it looks like some something out of a fucking scary movie. It looks like the ha- the, uh, the 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 fucking mascot from Hamburger Helper or something like that. <laughs> he's, he's up triple size. He's like, yeah. I think at least one's broken, and they're like, "Ah, oh, you want to call it a night?" He's like, "No, no, let's 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 keep going." You know, he doesn't want to ruin everybody's fun, and that's Jeremy. Jer- Jeremy would always find a way to step in shit and fuck the night up for everyone. Let's just just injure people, ruin things, break equipment, you know, all, all kinds of shit. Je- we were doing a thing one time where I had bought this thirteen hundred dollar car to blow up for this video, and it was uh, to promote a movie, and and the deadline was tomorrow. Okay. And, and they had paid me a very large amount of money, enough to buy a house to, to make this one video. And so this video's got to get done today. I've got a camera crew I've flown in from Canada. I've got uh, guys I've brought in from Atlanta to do a certain kind of filming. 
I've got a mechanic on hand in case something goes wrong. I've got a weapons expert that I brought in in case something goes wrong. Jeremy is hot dogging in this $1,300 car I've bought. And, I, and I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, Jeremy, don't do that. If something goes wrong with that car, I'm fucked. That's the third segment of this video. I got nothing else if you fuck this up. <laughs> oh, he goes and does it again, like when it's shoot time. And what, what happened was this car had been sitting for a long time, and there was like trash in the gasoline, in the, in the gas tank. That gets swished around when he's doing donuts. It goes in the fuel filter, stops it up. Car's dead. I have an actual mechanic, a man who, whose job is to be a mechanic. Like, like he's a, he's a well-paid, like, some sort of licensed diesel mechanic. He's like, there's nothing I can do. He's worked on it for half an hour, and I'm like, all right, Jeremy, get your shit out of the car. I make him get all the shit out of his car, and we blew his fucking car up that day. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car did he have? Which video is this? This is a uh, Secret Service weaponry. Uh, there was a there was like a, a school shooting or something. Was this like, when you were Hitman? No, that was oh. Hitman. Uh, th this was going to be. Um, it was one of those movies. I think it was White House Down. Remember that movie? It was to promote no. that. It's the one where Gerard Butler is the Secret Service agent, and uh, the president is like taking like they take the White House. The Russians do. Or the Koreans or something, and then like Gerard Butler, like single-handedly, Mission Impossible, Impossible style, wipes the whole like squad out in the White House. Anyway, it's to promote that. But like, there was a school shooting or something like right before we we're gonna upload, so they were like, we can't be attached to this now, but we'll still oh, pay. So oh I just the video Secret Service weaponry because that's basically what it was anyway. It was like weapons of the Secret Service. So you got to double dip a little bit. Double dipped it. Double dipped it. It was great. I, I was like, I. Obviously, I feel terrible about the tragedy that occurred, but... Was it Sandy Hook? Do you remember which school shooting it was? I, I have no idea. This is I, America. I you get them all mixed up. I, who fucking knows? It could have been. Um, I don't know. But Listen, uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Myers, we just heard about this thing, Columbine, and dude... <laughs> Does not reflect well. Imagine that. If they like just grabbed one from 99, and they're like, we had no idea. But that this is inappropriate. A, that <laughs> happened several times where there would be a big project and we and like we put in months of work the groundwork was laid money had exchanged hands weapons had been purchased and then there's a shooting somewhere and it's like oh we can't do this now in the current climate we can't do this and and uh, but that was an instance where i still got paid so i didn't you know i felt bad with the tragedy but i didn't mind Wait, not sticking there in the video you know, I, you know I got my shit and i got a cool video out of it but jeremy lost a fucking car because he was a dumb yeah I mean, you got to blow up your friend's car. That's like the greatest reward of all. Fair. I technically owned the car, but <laughs> he, he'd been driving it for six months. And for all intents and purposes, like I was like, yeah, it's your car. You know, whatever. You know. Kitty had went, um, she had went to L.A. to, uh, to help Machinima with some stuff. <clears throat> and while she was away, um, I decided to sneak this little video in. And this is the video we made. This is how we spent our afternoon. Yeah, we. It was. I didn't know how to introduce him. So he. he in reality, the way I know Jeremy is because he was a friend of my cousin's. And He's your cousin. <clears throat> no, it's not true at all. It's. He. he it's not. It's just not. Um, <laughs> I see the relation. Look, do they look kind of the same? Yeah, they look exactly the same. Yeah. I, I, look, I mean, it's. They're southern. They're all little cousin. We're going to get full yeah. capacitation like this. Regardless of who looks like what, I, uh, I mean, it's a pretty standard look Thank with, like, you know, scruffy face of hair and brown hair, like, whatever. But he's clearly a lot wider and shorter, and I'm taller and thinner. We're not related in any way. Shooting those buckshot at him is brutal. You're yeah, so, so close to him, and that barrel makes it halfway to him. So it's, it's really quiet in the... Um, in the video, and people take that as the, the round not being strong, but the thing is, I'm using a, that, that incredibly long barrel shotgun, and if you read anything online about long barrel shotguns like that, they work in effect like a silencer. It's, right. but I think we can come up with something it's much louder out of a normal shotgun. He faked falling, okay, of course, so for dramatic go. effect, which I thought was silly. Um, but Jeff this is very there. real. What's happening right here? <laughs> this is the, this is the, this is an X26 <laughs> right off the, with the waist of a cop who's standing off camera. It uh, one of them hits him in the upper thigh and then disconnects. It's not in his thigh, 
Uh, the other one's stuck in his lower back. Look at Kyle. He's an asshole. Oh. He's pulling it down again. <laughs> a little more. You can I see his one neck more. bulging and just held it for like three more so, seconds. I think he's in yeah, the it's five more seconds. It's a five-second ride every time you give him a pop. And my adrenaline was going so much. <laughs> My adrenaline was going so now, much that the first five to, seconds uh, seemed like it was just like a, just a like the blink of an eye, and I thought, well, this is no good for okay, the so video. I like, I need more footage than that, so I hit him again. <laughs> and I he was crying when he got up. <laughs> was he really? Yeah. I mean, he, not like he a... He was not looking happy. Not like, not like <laughs> crying and shedding tears, but like his eyes were full of tears. Like <laughs> He looks just pissed off Special and Russians just and other in a bad person. mood. I did a bad job. Yes, you just got I should have shook that stuff up better so you could see the stream. Uh, in my video, you see a, a, a stream of It looks paint like my paint orange. in your video. Yeah, here, you can't tell it, but his face is speckled orange with the stuff right now. It just I did a poor job of this. Kyle's so tough on his own video. <laughs> it really is. But anyway, um, this was all planned ahead. He knew we were going to be rough with him here, and this was going to be part of the gag that, hey, we're being rough with him because we don't care, and it's funny. But people take that as, oh, you're treating him like an animal. So this is very real as well. Um, oh, I didn't see the tattoo. Yeah, you got to keep watching even after the tattoo. If you look, he's a great squad to gave <laughs> Look at the bruises from the buckshot earlier. Oh, nice. I didn't notice. <laughs> So here he is washing his eyes out. <laughs> He's spitting. Yeah, from what I hear, pepper spraying is an awful experience. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. It's um, I, I'm I'm still more afraid of the taser though. I, I don't want to do the taser because it looks like it's awful. But really, you're pepper. more afraid of the taser. Yeah, I'd take the pepper spray again. Pepper spray wasn't that bad, I didn't think. I mean, I'd take bad. the taser first. It's 20 minutes. I, I first forget first. what happens here. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're the taser. And I hit him again. You didn't really hit um, him again, did you? No, I just wanted to fuck with him a little. Jeremy doesn't feel bad about any of that that went down because he got $250 out of it. And he got a free tattoo. He's got plenty of shitty tattoos all over. <laughs> this is not his worite tattoo, despite mm. the misspelling and the like hundred twenty dollars price tag mm. and the fact that I colored in the the stocks of the AKs. Um, it's it's that was you a colored video. them in. Yeah, that's what I, like like I, I thought in the you video. Heard, that's why I was kind of like casually mentioning it. Like, go into the tattoo place and I, I tell the tattoo artist, I'm like, I want to fill this thing in. I want to color it in. We went and get my boys to to film it. And he's like, oh, dude. First of all, I'm not losing my license. There are health concerns. Uh, there's the health department. I think he might have mentioned. And he's, he's like, and that tattoo gun, you know, it was almost like the thing had a, like it was Charlene over there or something. That tattoo gun is twelve hundred dollars. And 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 if it was even dropped, it'd be ruined. And I was like, do you have internet? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Let me show you what I do. And we <laughs> go over to his computer and like pull up two of my videos. And he's like, wow, that's cool. So, you hold it like this. <laughs> I can't believe he agreed to that. Originally, um, we, were, we were discussing the idea of that video. Like, yeah, let's shoot somebody with pepper spray, a taser, and uh, rubber bullets. Um, and that'll be a fun video, right? Let's less than lethal kind of, kind of deal. And uh, I was like, but who the fuck are we going to get to take all this? And I like, my cousin Scott, I'm like, I'll give you a percentage. I was, I'm like, forget like paying you a flat fee. I'll give you X percentage of what the video makes. And it was going to make, it's like thousands of dollars. You know, mm. he's going to make three grand or something to, to, to take this <laughs> And he's like, no, no fucking way. Three grand, please. And I think we may have even gone to five at one point. No, no, won't do it. And, uh, and we're like, we could probably find somebody in the fucking parking lot, Scott. You're telling me for $5,000 you won't take a little pain and suffering? I bet there's some guy outside in the parking lot who would do it. Sure enough, we go in the parking lot and the guy at Taco Bell is taking the garbage out to the dumpsters. And there's like a little partition between where we are and where they are. Look over the wall and my buddy's like, hey, man. You want to make some money? And he's like, what do I got to do? And I was like, oh, my God. We might have somebody. We spell it out to this random guy, and he's on fucking board. I can't, I'm like, I can't believe it. We get his name, get his number and everything. He's going to show up in two days. And we're going to do this thing. So I call my, uh, sh my sheriff's deputy buddy who's providing the, uh, I think it's an X-26 taser. That's the one the cops use. Mm -hmm. um, might be an M-26, but I think it's X-26. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, we found a guy to take the taser. Um, whenever you bring it over, it, his name is Bill Jones. Bill Jones. He works at Taco Bell. And he's like, Little Bill. And I'm like, Hey, he's a short guy. I don't know his nickname or anything. He's like, Yeah, I've shot him with this taser before. 
Uh, that ain't going to work. He's a fucking criminal. We've had to lock him up on, a, on multiple occasions. I have literally shot that man with my taser before. <laughs> he won't work. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> so Jeremy really came through in the pinch. I think I paid him $250 plus, plus the cost of his tattoo, and he endured some was pretty serious suffering that day. He didn't even come back with a <laughs> counteroff. It was just so... He was just mm. sold at 250 and he wasn't even there during the time when we were experimenting with the rubber bullets to determine how serious of a deal they were, because, like, I just ordered them off the internet, right? It's not like we made these things. They're not mm -hmm. cop rounds. They're fucking off the internet. And so we took the uh, bulletproof vest from the cop, put, like, some cardboard liner in it to, like, make it stand up instead of just falling in a pile like cloth might normally do, and then popped it with this rubber bullet from, like, 10 yards away, and it, like pushed through it didn't penetrate the vest of course because it's a rubber bullet but it pushed the vest hard enough to like tear big holes in the cardboard and we're all just scratching our heads like "Ooh, that's gonna hurt huh the yeah. worst strip club i've ever been to was in my hometown wait it was called the cafe risque and they <laughs> slid in and they 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 applied for their licensing as a family burger restaurant and i guess nobody checked the fine print and they were like yeah okay sounds good then they get the strippers in there. Now they serve burgers. They were okay. Hmm. But they had they had strippers too. <laughs> and uh, they were open like 24 hours a day, of course, as a strip club. And we would go literally just to play pool because they had two pool tables. And uh, we would go in there and shoot pool like late at night, like three in the morning and shit like that. And they would, they, we'd be in there so much they'd complain like, hey, you got us. You got to go over there and tip the girls or, or you can't be in here just shooting pool all night for 50 cents a game or whatever. So we'd go over and like, you know, spend a few dollars on the girls. And I just remember going over and being like, ah, oh, didn't I go to high school with you? And she's just like, yeah. <laughs> and she's just like fucking snaggle teeth, just really fucking nasty with like moles all over her and just really gross chicks. And because especially None of late them were at hot? night. None of them. Did were you go hot. during were, prime time? Isn't that when the best girls it's are like there? Tuesday at noon. Yeah, this <laughs> is like Tuesday <laughs> for real. Free like, burgers like, during the week at like two in the morning, something like that. And I remember kind of like joking with uh, with Scott, and I was like, you know, it'd be funny if we threw a quarter. Now I never would because that's really you know offensive to like throw change at them. You know, we we, we gave yeah, dollar no bills shit. and stuff <laughs> like that. And, uh, and and he was like, uh uh. You get in trouble up here, they throw your ass out through that door and they hit your head on it on the way out. And I'm like, how do you know that? He said, well, we're in here one See, night. See, this scar and this scar and this and scar. <laughs> slow learner. Jeremy, the girl is like shaking her ass in front of Jeremy and Jeremy goes, boop, and pokes her in the asshole with it after he licks his finger. So he fingered her she, ass a little. I don't I don't know if it went in, mm -hmm. but was he, there a penetration? I, I wasn't there. He claimed there was a little penetration, just the tip. But he licks his finger and poop pokes her in the asshole, and she straight up Leon and like Leon comes over and grabs Jeremy and hits his head on the door on the way out and slings him out through the yard, and they were asked to leave. <laughs> uh, like like well, why did he do that and, if he already knew? He, he didn't was know. That's, that's how he learned. That's how he learned. Oh, that's how he <laughs> learned. That's, Just giving her the I, old sloppy Cosby. Have I told the story about taking Jeremy to Fleming's and the pickle shot? I don't think so. Shot. All right. So, so he picture, would be so completely this, not I, changed I, at all? So picture this. I just had uh, had hooked up with the prostitute who had bled all over the bed and everything. Um, <laughs> it's a great start. Carry on. I remember yeah. that story. <laughs> Blood everywhere. It was like a slaughtered a pig in the bed. I'm loving it. Hilarious to me. She's humiliated. And um, uh, so me and my buddy decide for some reason, let's take these prostitutes to dinner. Well, let's just take them to Fleming's. And so we, we were going to. So, so we say to my cousin and Jeremy, hey. Uh, we're going to Fleming's to get dinner with our prostitutes. Would you like to come? And my cousin was like, no, nah, I don't want to go. And Jeremy was like, I'll go. And I was like, wait a <laughs> minute. We were asking the, the two of you if you wanted to go, because otherwise you're, you're a fifth wheel here, Jeremy. That's what I was thinking in my head. But Jeremy doesn't understand social cues like that, so away we go. <laughs> so in case you don't know, um, I could be wrong about this, but Fleming's in Houston, Texas is, I think it was rated as the ninth best state place in the country. Very nice place. Their, their steak's incredible, and even their lobster. They had like this blue shelled Australian lobster the last time I went. That was a hundred and twenty dollars, and me and my buddy got one and like split it because we were just curious. What is a hundred twenty dollars? 
or lobster tastes like. Anyway, the girls, my friend and Jeremy, and uh, the waiter comes around to take the drink orders, right? You know, you, you've been in these places before. It's, mm-hmm. you, know, it's, you order courses step by step. Anyway, it comes around for the drink orders. I place mine. You know, we're all getting Diet Cokes and shit. Nothing crazy. Gets around to Jeremy. He, get, he says, mmm, looking at this big menu. Closes it, looks up at the guys. I have a pickle shot, Miller Lite, and a bottle of that lobster macaroni. Like, hands him the, the menu. And the guy's like, befuddled. He's like, doesn't know even, doesn't even know where to start with that shit. He's like, a p- pickle shot? And everybody at the table is like, like their heads immediately go, whoop, like over to Jeremy. And like, what? And he's like, and, and Jeremy's like, yeah, pickle shot. And the guy's like, I don't know what a pickle shot is. And he's Jeremy like, looks at him with such disgust. Like, <laughs> he's just like, and you call yourself a professional. <laughs> what are you doing? In his head, it, that's that's the vibe he's giving this guy. He's like, and you're a waiter. What? What are you? What are you? A mechanic? You don't know what a pickle shot is? I'd never heard of such a thing. Uh, and yeah. none of it, no one at the table had. So we all just locked on Jeremy. He, and he begins to explain like he's explaining to a child. He's like, a pickle shot is a shot of pickle juice, shot of tequila, and then he makes the motion of like doing a shot with each hand. And he goes, bam, bam, mm, mm, that's good. And the guy's like. Uh, okay, well, we've got some bread and butter pickles. I guess we could pour you some juice in a sh- He's like, yeah, yeah, that's good, bread and butter. All right, that'll work. So, yeah, I want my, I want my pickle shot, a Miller Lite, and a big bowl of that macaroni, uh, macaroni and cheese. And the guy's like, well, what, what about your entree? And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, well, I, I just want that macaroni. And he's like, you <laughs> just want the side item. Yeah, but I want a big bowl of it. Like, oh, okay. Um, well, I'll just put these drink well, quarters in. and you I and think. that bowl of macaroni. <laughs> so, it sounds so, so awkward and uncomfortable oh, it, for everyone. Oh, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. So that's what he did. You know, everyone else had a steak and a salad and an appetizer and, and like this this you know five six course meal. He had a big. They brought him a big bowl of this lobster macaroni and cheese. He ate that and he did um, four uh, four rounds of a pickle shot and a Miller Lite until <laughs> he was wasted, just wasted. And he w- and we were like pretty. <laughs> Pretty, you're pretty. Uh, I don't even know what we said, but you're pretty drunk, huh, Jeremy? You yeah, know, but we said it in a way. It was like, hey, you've had a few, huh? You having a good time? He's like, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm sober. I'm fine. We get back to the hotel. We, uh, I go up to my room. I've got my own room. Jeremy's sharing a room with my uh, my cousin. <laughs> it's nighttime. We got work in the morning. I'm asleep, enjoying myself. I'm in bed. Lights out. <sighs> the phone rings in my room. And I'm just like, what the fuck could this even be? Because, you know, hotel phones are so loud and obnoxious. It's, it's that really yeah. loud ring. Red light. I'm like, hello? Hello? And they're just like, hi. Um, we have a Mr. Fulbright down here, and he says he's with you. And I'm like, yeah, he's in one of my rooms. Um, what's the deal? She's, she's like, well, he's locked out of his room. I'm like, oh, okay, well, give him a key. She's like, we're going to need you to come down. And I'm like, Why? <laughs> She's just like, we just need you to come. I was like, and I, I was like, you don't believe it's me? I was like, who else would be in my room answering to my name? She's like, we just need you to come down. And I'm just like, fuck. I jump up. I'm putting my pants on. I was like, mother, what the fuck is this? Why are they bothering me in the middle of the night? I round the, I come out of these double door, these golden doored elevators. There's four of them in a little battery there. I walk around the corner, past the nice restaurant, past the piano player, past the uh, concierge. And there he is, wearing nothing but these boxers with pink hearts on them, covered in (laughs) tattoos that most civilized folk would think are racist, or at least ignorant. (laughs) And and he's got his nipples pierced, and he's kind of standing there, leaning against the desk, where picking, like like scratching his nipple rings, like flipping them around and stuff, spinning them. (laughs) And he... He's one of those guys who wears a he he wears a hat all the time and his hair is like maybe three and a half four inches long so like it's a permanent like fucked up hairdo thing where the hat's like got it all mashed up and ruined and he doesn't have a hat on so his hair is just a mess he looks like a wild man and there's this lovely looking black woman who's about thirty five years old who looks confused <laughs> she's like he shouldn't be here so I, and, and I had to make a decision at that moment. Do I walk up and get my friend out of this and get him in his room, or do I just go, I've never seen him before, and save my own <laughs> dignity? So I had to walk in there and say, yep, he's with me, <laughs> and get him a key back to his room. Jeremy's just always fucking up. He, he's a professional fuck-up artist. Can but we just tell so you the know, story of when you wanted to beat up Jeremy? Yes. Or is that a better... Op- oh, really? You'll yeah. tell it? 
Oh, Please. I'll tell it. So that people should know, Jeremy is a boss, country-strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big guy. Um, so we were doing the controller, uh, which was a reality show we did in conjunction with EA and Medal of Honor uh, Advanced Warfighter. And uh, we got Optic Hex and X Jaws and um, a few other gamers. Phase oh, um, Tommy, uh, maybe? Yeah, Tommy was in there that, that does Phase Clan. And then um, another guy who was a Halo pro whose name, I'm bad with names, but the, the, the premise of the show, fast forwarding, is that you had four gamers and four uh, special ops guys, like military guys. And the, the military guys were going to coach the gamers in military type challenges, shooting. And the gamers were going to coach the military guys in gaming challenges playing video games versus each other. And uh, and this thing was really so each hard. each one to... does what they're bad at with the code which that is a pro at it. Okay. It's a pro at it, yeah. And so um, I'm in charge of the whole thing, basically. Kitty and I are. Kitty, Kitty totally coordinated everything. I had to put everything into action. I didn't hire anybody to assist me with anything. I did it all myself, and there was a lot to be done. So I was running ragged, like working on this thing for uh, days and days, about a week in advance, like every day, 12 hours a day setting up sets and like giving advice and like redesigning challenges and stuff and uh, the VP of EA was there and um, and you know this is the guy that I wanted to make a good impression with because he's paying me to put this thing on I'm hosting the show I'm doing all this stuff and I I want to show him that I'm a competent guy he's he's getting his money's worth and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing so I'm like everybody be on your fucking best behavior you know like anyway long story short that's not Jeremy, something Jeremy excels at, best behavior. No. So <laughs> Jeremy and, and, and Kitty are there uh, with this guy, and they're discussing one of the challenges, which involves um, remote control airplanes with explosives on them that are going to fly uh, in circles over the contestants, and they got to shoot them down with shotguns. Um, and that's something I'm really, really good at, uh, shooting stuff out of the air. I just am. I've done it a lot. And, uh, and Jeremy tells the guy for some reason that he, he's like, Kyle probably won't be able to do that. He ain't too good of a shot with that shotgun. No, didn't he say you can't shoot for shit? That's the quote <laughs> yeah, I have burned like in my that. head. The, the, the core message that he gave the VP of, of fucking EA was that I couldn't fucking shoot stuff with a shotgun. I, could, I probably wouldn't even be able to do this thing. And, of course, the VP doesn't give a shit, right? Like, he wouldn't care less. But he might have. And so Kitty <laughs> comes... So Kitty comes and, and back to the house, and she tells me this, and, and I'm, like, upstairs working or something. She tells me, and I'm like, huh... Well, that motherfucker, he shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm going to say something to him about it later. And I go back to work or whatever. I'm writing something. And, and then I think about it a little more. And I'm like, that motherfucker. I need, nah, I'm going to go tell him right now. I'm going to go tell him now. So I get in the car and I start driving toward where he is. And I'm like, I'm getting madder as I go. I get about a, a halfway there and I'm like, you called me. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to talk this one out. I'm going to have to kick Jeremy's ass. I'm like, Jeremy's an ass whooping. I was like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of Jeremy. I'm just gonna walk in and I'm just gonna hit him like before he can move, and I'm just gonna keep hitting him, and and I don't think they'll let him beat me up, even if I'm not able to beat him up, you know, sucker punch him. I, I'm gonna go beat up Jeremy. He needs a beating. <laughs> and, and so I get a little closer, and I'm like, but wait a minute. If I lose this, it would be bad. I was like, I can't lose this fight. I'm like, I'm in the right here. I have to arm myself. So I grab a bat. I'm like, so I grab the baseball bat. <laughs> Jeremy's a big guy. And I'm like, I'm not here for a fair fight. I'm here to punish Jeremy. I'm here to send a message to Jeremy. So This is Kyle's I, dad emerging in Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> it was the maddest I'd ever been. I was because he really insulted me and in not just like a, a like way that would hurt my feelings, but a way that could potentially hurt me financially and and you know, my reputation, which I care about. And, and certain things I care about my reputation. When I'm shooting, I think I'm pretty good at it and and for somebody who, who would have some clout, somebody whose opinion might be respected, an associate of mine, if you will, when he says it, 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 it carries some extra weight. So anyway, I got over there with the bat, and I, I didn't beat him up, but I really cussed him out. I, I, I cussed him out, and I threatened him, and, and, and that was the last vet. He never did anything like that again. But I was ready to just beat the shit out of him. At one if point, he said you, anything you reached out different, to me. I was going to hit him. You asked me if What'd your level of rage was appropriate for the situation and you were like you know what would you do and and like how would i handle this and and things like that like we talked it out i was so fucking mad he well was. walk me through it how close did you actually get to hitting him you had the bat he, in your hand you were oh, feeling was, big the bat was there in case he was going to argue with anything i said uh, <laughs> it, 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 i basically decided that the bat was there in case 
he didn't like anything that I said because the things that I was saying was, you know, you're a piece of shit, you're stupid, you fucking moron, you know, you're putting this in danger, you're putting that in danger. It's like you you don't talk shit about me, and you know it's not even fucking true. You're a fucking liar, you lying piece of shit. Wipe that fucking smile off your face, or I'll knock your fucking, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. It was that kind of conversation, it, and I was just waiting on him to say anything different, and I was gonna have to hit him. And I think it, it's worth noting what you had to actually like perform the stunt to like show the contestants how like what was expected of them and it was two model airplanes two shots right yeah yeah it was just bam bam oh it was yeah i I did it so fast actually i did it so fast that they had to stop and redo it again because the cameras didn't catch it like like it was bullshit that he had said that and it really pissed me off yeah kyle's good with a pistol kyle's good with a rifle and he's great with a shotgun yeah i hate i hated that he said that and i still hate that he said that He's a fucking dumbass. And that's why I need to get him right here and ask him some questions and, and make him answer for the thing that he is, that, that he's on this <laughs> the I mean, thing is, that he is. You, I mean, once you get this guy going, he's, he's as good as Wings of Redemption. That's what I'm offering here. I, I've, got a, I've got a fucking guy in, in my back pocket that's basically Wings of Redemption. He's like Maybe a dumb better. version of Wings. Of course, like I said, he'd, he'd go on those goddamn five-day road trips with $25 in his pocket. <laughs> oh, Scott and I had, you know, concealed carry permits, so we'd often, like, especially on those trips when there's lots of expensive shit in the truck, we'd be packing heat, concealed carry. And he wanted to do it, too, but he didn't have a license. And you'd have to continually be like, no, 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 leave the gun in the car. You can't go into a fucking gas station strapped, you moron. Like, like you always have to be <laughs> disarming this guy. Like, like he'd... Uh, Sounds he'd, like... A- Dealing with a dangerous child. A Georgia Conceal, by the way, child. I'm pretty sure you just mail in for that shit. Like it, hey, you didn't have fifty dollars? What are you talking about? A, at the time he made <laughs> at like I don't know if Jeremy's exact age. You know, he he's one of those like you look I don't at him. Know his exact age. <laughs> no does no he? one does. That's unbelievable. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I had to guess, I would say at this point, you know, because I'm thirty one, I, I would say he's somewhere between uh twenty three and twenty six. Uh, he he had mentioned that he was having this issue with his truck. Apparently, it's only running in first and second gear, and uh, and that's a major transmission I- issue. And I'm like, so you drove over here with only first and second gear working, towing a twelve thousand dollar lawnmower. He's like, well, yeah, I got to get over and cut that grass. And I couldn't argue with him because like I wanted my fucking grass cut. So I was like, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming to cutting the grass. Then good, good deal. So on the way home, he blows the transmission out. So now he's blown the transmission out of his truck. His plan is this. Full coverage insurance, burn the truck. (laughs) (laughs) What could go wrong? This is a perfect plan. (laughs) Here's the the problem, though. My dad helped. My dad holds the note on the car. He's defrauding my dad. (laughs) It's like, no, Jeremy. No, no, you you can't do that. Like, like, like. No, we're in. The, mm, this guy is the dumbest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. He has a planned child that he's gonna have in February. He makes, well, this way, this week he probably made two hundred and fifty dollars because I gave him a hundred. He, but he makes like a hundred and fifty dollars a week. Like, Ooh. they have an apartment. His girlfriend doesn't have a job. What is the fucking plan? Like, what happens when the child is born and someone has to feed it? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to subsidize their poor decisions. I'd take Jeremy on road trips. He'd never bring money, ever. Like, like we'd, be, we'd go on like a four-day road trip to like Arizona, five-day road trip to Arizona, and he'd have $25, right? <laughs> like, it tw- oh, that's pretty douchey. He'd have 25 fucking dollars, and this is a guy who smokes a pack a day and needs at least two Red Bulls in the morning to get going and is going to need two or three meals a day, right? Guess who's paying for all that shit? So I- I'm driving the truck. Scott's in the passenger seat. Jeremy's in the back, but he won't sit in the fucking back like a normal adult. He wants to like lean forward like a parrot or like a dog and be on our shoulder, like be right between us and <sighs> breathe on you. And, and it would just be stinking up the front of the truck so bad you'd have to roll the windows down and we'd all start smoking cigarettes to try to like smoke him out so he'd get back away from <laughs> just, it. Just try to smoke him out? Like, like puffing on cigarettes. You know what the, the thing that I don't like? What I would ask him about is stealing your guns. Right, Kyle would like lend him a 1911 or something. People don't know. We'll call this a 750 dollar gun, and then he would just keep it, like maybe forever, just with no intention of ever returning it. Like, you want this oh. back? You got to catch me. To it, so he would borrow guns, and uh, I would lose track of how many he'd borrowed. 
and, and it'd get to a point where like I was consolidating my guns or I was like organizing my guns and I'd be like, what the fuck are all my guns? God damn. And so I was like, you know, calling up like, hey, Jeremy, do you have some of my guns? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jeremy, I need you to bring all of my guns that you have over here because I'm like consolidating, I'm cleaning. I'm Only if some you off. can name the ones I have. <laughs> I remember he brought him back <laughs> Which and he ones literally are you missing? <laughs> he brought him back and he literally had twenty two thousand dollars worth of guns. He literally had twenty two thousand dollars worth of guns borrowed. And wow. I was just like, We're gonna be on a one at a time basis from now on, Jerome. Just you check one out. You got to bring it back to get another. This is just way too much. You had an arsenal as, as with a you. non-gun. What, what do you borrow guns for? What do you like? What stuff. is the problem you have that you need that you need to borrow a gun? Uh, you know, you want to. His no thing. Shit. He liked to show them off to people. Um, he liked to go to Walmart and be like, "Yeah, look what I got. I got a fucking crazy thing here." And he would also go uh, deer hunting with guns sometimes. He like um, he'd go shooting. You know, it'd be a thing where like him and his buddies are going somewhere to shoot. You know, they're going to go down by yeah. to, to the river or somebody's house and everybody lays out eight rifles and then they, they borrow each other's guns and they shoot a bunch of targets. And so he'd okay. want to borrow multiple guns, but mostly to like show them off and brag that he knew me or pretend they were his potentially. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> what do you got there, Kyle? I've got a Jeremy story. Oh, oh Jeremy stories. Got it back. I got a Jeremy story. I finally got my gun back from him. So... <clears throat> Jeremy, um, my buddy Jeremy, is well known for his borrowing, borrowing expertise. He's a professional borrower. <laughs> right now, there's a dirt bike in the back of his truck, not his. He is, he is hard on the things he borrows. He doesn't treat them well. Um, he has had borrowed from me at one time $15,000 worth of firearms that I didn't know about. I was like, hey, Jeremy, could you bring all the guns that you have borrowed and back to my house? I'm going to clean them up, put them in the vault. Let's do that. And uh, 15000 in a pile. I'm like, shit, I didn't know you had my 50 cal. Like, I didn't know you had my HK. Both of my Glocks. You know, he had all this shit. And uh, he borrows things like ATVs, uh, trucks, always get them returned, and they're either muddy or dented up, treated poorly. Uh, he's not good at taking care of your shit. And uh, so I got all my guns back from him. Fuckers uh, maybe, never seeing my tent fly. Maybe, maybe two years ago, something Rainfall. like that. I thought... But then the other day, I was I was paying his buddy Josh to, to work for me, doing some work, and Josh mentioned that Jeremy has a 40 caliber pistol. We were just talking about different calibers. He's like, yeah, Jeremy's got a 40 caliber pistol. And I was like, what kind? <laughs> I was like, what kind? He's like, I don't really know. I was like, semi-auto? He's like, yeah. I was like, Nick, sort of a silver nickel-plated kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, is it a car? He's like, yeah, I think it is. I was like, that's my fucking pistol. He's not supposed to have that fucking pistol. He's supposed to give, give giving me all of that shit back. He's still got my car. I thought my car was stolen. I thought it was lost. I thought I, you know, this or that happened to it. I don't even know where that pistol is. It's a seven or eight hundred dollar gun. So, Jeremy comes and works for me on uh, Monday or Tuesday and helps me film some. And at the end of the day, I was like, hey, uh, uh. I want that uh, that car pistol back. He's like, yeah, 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 I got that car. Can I borrow your uh, Kimber whenever I get it? And I was just like, for whatever reason, because he just had finished, I was like, sure, sure, you can borrow the Kimber. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, I'm going to get my fucking pistol. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> so <clears throat> today, yesterday came by, and I couldn't find him to pay him. I owed him $75 for working for me. And, uh, and so today, I go over again to where I thought he might be. He's not there, so... I just left the cash there with a little envelope with his name on it. I figured they'd get it to him. And, uh, and so he pulls up at my fucking house today and comes on in. <laughs> he's like, Carl, Carl. And I'm just like, Jerome? He's just like, he's going to come up in the house. And, uh, and, and I, I, he's like, I come to get money. And I was like, I left it over at the, at the shop. It's over there. He's like, oh, I guess I got to drive back over there. Can I get this Kimber while I'm here? Because it was sitting on the table. And I'm like, Sure. Where's that car at? He's like, oh, I'll put it in your truck. And I was like, all right, all right. And I walk back to my bedroom, and I'm like, you know what? No. And I, I, I walk back out there, and he's in my fucking closet looking for a holster for the pistol he's about to borrow again. <laughs> he's like, do you know where the little plastic holster is that you got for the 1911s? He's like, uh -huh. I see all of these. You know, he's, he's like, I see this Savoy leather ones you've got here, and the snake one here, that's nice too. And I like this super <laughs> rig you got, but I really want the hard plastic one that's low profile. And I'm just like, you know what, Jeremy? No, give, me, give it back. Give it back. I was like, you don't take care of my shit. You're not borrowing any more shit. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, it's over. It's done. I love you to death. But and he, and I, by this time, he's like, he's like awkwardly shuffling out of the house because he because I've like scolded him. I was like, I love you to death, but no more borrowing. You don't take take good care of my shit. So, got my pistol back finally. I've wanted this thing back for a while. It's uh, it's nothing extraordinary, but it's my fucking gun. And like, I loaned him this this pistol, right? I loaned him this pistol, and it didn't have any scratches on it. And when it came back, it's like this. Like, let's see. I'll try to do close up so you can see like how many scratches there are. I do hate the whole. Oh, I forgot. I borrowed that thing. Yeah, that that it seems like weird. Yeah. See the trigger. Yeah, oh yeah. wow. I hate that fucking guy. I keep yeah. getting that vibe. Mm. I don't like that at all. I, can't I don't care. Even for share him. my stories. I'd Very love to kind to in. him. Yeah. I'd give I, them gifts and shit. Like, they'd come over, I'd give them a drone or something. I'd be like, yeah, I got 30 of these drones. Have a drone. I gave them a bunch of stuff. You know, I just, like, give them things. I've got lots of extras and, like, duplicate items of, like, ex gun accessories and all kinds of, like, freebies I've got. There, and I just give them. There are a stuff. lot of people who think it's okay to steal from someone, provided that they have a good bit more than you. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I don't care for that either. I often fall the vict victim to that <laughs> one, I think. So I went to my friend Jeremy's wedding, and uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too harsh uh, about any uh, about anything and everything that went down. So his wedding is coming up, and I know it's gonna be a pretty ridiculous affair because he's a redneck. He's he's everything that you think of when you think of a redneck, and he'd happily tell you that. And I knew going in that it was a cowboy themed wedding. All the groomsmen are wearing black cowboy hats and uh, and black shirts. And uh, uh, um, we're doing it in a park by a waterfall. And <clears throat> I don't think we notified anyone or reserved the space because there's like tourists milling around. <laughs> and we're sitting up there. <laughs> I was the best dressed person at the wedding, period. I came. <laughs> <laughs> Including the groom? I, yes. <laughs> oh, I wore pretty much the same thing I wore to Joe Lozon's wedding, except I wore some different slacks. They were like uh, they were kind of tan, khaki-ish colored slacks, and uh, and I wore a different tie. I think I was actually technically better dressed than when I went to Joe's wedding, but I couldn't see myself wearing jeans to a wedding, and that's what they told me to do. I got there. There's a guy wearing a graphic tee, flip flops like these, <laughs> drinking a Dr Pepper while the bride is coming down the aisle. <laughs> I swear to God, there's no music. There's no music. You can't hear the service that's being performed by this really fat lady who looks like she's dressed for the dollar store. Um, I don't know. Just the way that people were dressed. It, everyone was very, very underdressed, except for the groomsmen who looked like, I don't know, like they were about to have a, have a gunfight at the OK Corral or something. They're all dressed up like cowboys. Characters of what liberals want to believe conservatives are. is what they, <laughs> That really sounds like... like Everything outside about 10 minutes outside of Nashville. That's pretty much everything around there. <laughs> I See, love and, oh God. One of the pictures Kyle sent, there was in the same shot a lady wearing jorts and flip flops. <laughs> a guy, and there was a stars and bars on his shirt. Like oh. a Confederate flag. Like that's wearing a normal jorts. thing. Yeah. When you're not in 1864. The best man had a, had a stars and bars belt buckle on. <laughs> fucking big <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it was yeah. uh, it's really fun i was laughing on the inside the whole time um uh at the end we you know he had like a big tip jar basically to throw cash in so i you know i, th I threw him a good amount of money and uh i think that was for the honeymoon uh let me tell you a short Didn't story someone about make fun of you for your outfit um, Jeremy, Jeremy himself he was like you way overdressed <laughs> <laughs> and i was like no nah, you're you're just dressed like a fucking clown. It's your <laughs> I can like I came here knowing that I would be overdressed. I didn't know I'd be the best dressed. And if anyone shows up and uh, you know, I, I I don't want to be the guy at the wedding wearing flip flops. I, I don't want that to ever be said of me. So I I was gonna wear fucking dress shoes. And I was like at least dressed up like you're going to Sunday school, Jeremy. Like try to put it in terms he'd understand. It's like <laughs> whatever, but. In, in the end, he married a very pretty girl. Um, they, they had their baby there. It was a touching moment. They got married. They got hitched. And uh, I think they're going to be happy together. So that's good. The night before, however, this is what happened. It's 2 in the morning, and my phone goes off. And I don't normally get messages at 2 in the morning anymore. So I, I, I check this thing. I look up, and uh, it's, it's my friend Chris, who lives near my father's farm. He goes, someone just went down your dad's driveway, and they haven't came out yet. 
And they people have stolen stuff from my dad before. They went, they've gone down there and stolen a few things. So he's got cameras and lights, and <clears throat> he, he generally tries to patrol the thing at night occasionally. So I immediately call my dad. I'm like, hey, somebody just went down the driveway. The hammock came out. You need to get over there, take the AR-15, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, yeah, all right, I'm going, I'm going. So I'm like, well, tell me what happens, you know, when you get out of there. So are you going too at this point? Like- no, no, I'm too far away. He's, he's two minutes away, and I'm 20 minutes away. Okay. So he, uh, so he calls me back after he's gone down there or whatever. He's like, I got down there, and it's fucking Jeremy changing his brake shoes for the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, it's 2 a.m. technically the day of his wedding and he's changing the brake shoes to go on his honeymoon so dad's up there fucking ready to take him out it was pretty- <laughs> what do you got kyle some some photos from jeremy's wedding oh ah. <laughs> That's a wedding. it was uh it was casual um that looks casual <laughs> anthony have oh, you been that's married very casual sandals those are flip-flops I approve of those. He's turning to see the bride walking down the aisle wearing flip-flops and a graphic tee. I had, I, I had an argument with Jeremy for 15 minutes one time because he says that, and it may be, the problem with telling him, I don't know why the fire department told him this, but when he was in his crash and rolled, they told him that if he had had on his safety belt, he'd have died. So now he thinks that, that he should never wear one mm-hmm. in case he's in an identically ridiculous accident and are they even right that that fireman is not an expert in automobile analysis i think the situation was that the roof collapsed down and the seatbelt would have held him up and but but because it wasn't he he was able to go down into the floorboard and like thrown into the floorboard and that saved him whereas if he'd been in the seat he'd have died because his his truck got crumpled mine did Uh, i've been in that accident with the seatbelt I, I don't know. I know. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. He was a Ford Ranger. I, I don't know what you were in. You know? and, and again, GTI. and again, yeah. I'm not saying that the fireman was accurate in his in in his statement after he cut Jeremy out of his fucking piece of shit Ranger. He was texting and driving with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're. A um, but but I'm gonna do like I said. I'm gonna try my best to get him on here. Uh, cause I and I already decided. I was like, yeah. I, at first, I was like, I don't want that fucker sitting next to me for four hours. You know, like right here, sharing this space. Like here, like imagine, I'm just imagining him right here, in that breathing on me and stuff. His breath is just putrid. It's the worst ever. Um, and just you people know, think like, Kyle's being mean, but those people have nothing nice to say about this guy him. ever. He, I mean, look, all right, here, let me let me give you a rundown. Let me say some nice things about Jeremy. Jeremy, okay. Jeremy is loyal uh, most of the time. Jeremy's, when he's not stealing from you, when he's not stealing from you, mm-hmm. he's hardworking. When you're watching him. He's um, <laughs> he's a good dri- <laughs> he's, a, he's a good driver in his dreams. He's um, I don't think see. you're good at nice things. Um, um, <laughs> you're really he's bad a, at it. He's a kind person and he means well, generally speaking. Bless but, his heart. But <laughs> he he has no table manners. He picks his nose. He blows his nose and wipes the snot on things that are, you know, like his pants. Like he'll, oh, Jesus. He'll, 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 you know, like when I'm in the shower, like especially if I've been working all day in a field, like I'll blow my nose in my hands like this, I'll, and like blow my nose in my hands. There's snot on my hands now, but there's the shower. Like it immediately cleanses my hands of the snot. <laughs> Jeremy does it while you're in the trunk with him and wipes his hands on his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would make me so uncomfortable. The worst part? They were Scott's pants. They were borrowed pants. Oh, he wiped, oh see. Oh, Scott okay, goes, that's, Scott that's, goes, that's what the you fuck did you just do? <laughs> Jeremy goes, rubber, rubber, rubber. <laughs> which, <laughs> which means, what, what do you mean? Sounds like a teacher from Charlie Brown. Rubber, rubber, rubber. Yeah. I, I, he doesn't what do you borrow mean? things well. They always break and come back. To sh- I wouldn't yeah. let him borrow a pile of dirt from me. <laughs> so he, he uh, fuck it up got, got like my fucking pants, man. You just blew your nose and wiped snot on my pants. What are you doing? He's like, rawr, 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 rawr. like it hurt his feelings or whatever. <laughs> he's, he's, like, like, he's like, he's like, if you want to do that with like, your own pants, here's what we're gonna do. We're pulling over to the gas. Don't you fucking touch anything. We're pulling over to the gas station. You keep your hands where I can see them. I'm gonna come around, let you out. You go in there, wash your goddamn hands. 
wash my pants the best you can and then get back out here. He's like, you can't be touching my door handle, radio, shaking people's hands with booger hands. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Who's dumber, Jeremy or, or, or Andy? Uh, oh, Jeremy's much dumber. But, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but Andy's, Andy's, Andy's pretty close on some things, though. Uh, Joe has met Jeremy. A, he uh, rolled with him on one trip. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You got you oh. guys had a little wrestling match out there in the grass. I remember that. Yeah, I like oh, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy's a nice guy. Jeremy's married now. Uh, has his own kid and like a step kid. That's scary. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's doing. I, I was... If I'm never in a car that he's driving, that'll be too soon. <laughs> Dude, it was great. Oh. So I'm in the back seat giving Jeremy shit about his horrible driving, right? I'm he, giggling at how harsh he's being. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's so bad. I think Kyle was in the front seat, if I remember right, but it's not important. What's important is that Joe yeah, was funny. there. So so Jeremy's, like, getting upset. And, and, he, and by the way, his driving really is awful. Like, yeah, he's bad. He's the, really bad. The car not in looking. front of him hits the brakes. He hits the gas and then just triples <laughs> down on the brakes so that he doesn't hit him. You know, if he misses a turn... He'll go miles looking for a U-turn because just like U-turning is not like a thing that he could do. Or like, or you know, like if if you kind of figure out the whole city's laid in like a grid, if you miss your turn, you can just like take the next one and come around. These concepts are not registering with Jeremy. The whole thing is terrible. And sometimes I'm not saying anything. I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. Yeah, yeah. And we're his... trying not to because he's sensitive about he's that sort of thing. He's mad at this point. And he's like, he's up front and he's fuming. And this Jeremy guy, you don't <laughs> yeah, know. Posture. He's strong as fuck. Jeremy would kick strong. my ass. And and it, but like like at the time he was spending all his day carrying like several chickens. five pound <laughs> buckets of dead chickens. Like he would just clear <laughs> yeah, out. Imagine. A a imagine you know for you know forty pounds and uh, and at least one of your hands all day and just walking like doing like uh, what are those um what do you call them when you when you walk with a weight in each hand like um, um farmers something walk. farmers carry yeah, yeah, yeah. Farmers. there you go perfect exactly he's doing those all day legit so he's just <laughs> he's, he's built he's strong he's he's his, pretty his tough his forms guy. are like Popeye shit going on there like they're, they're just big. they're just big and strong and 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 I'm laughing at his horrible driving. Under the safe, protective umbrella of Joe Lozon. <laughs> <laughs> we were all making fun of him quite a bit. And you could see Jeremy's like body language change. Like 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 he had his right hand on the steering wheel, but he's, he's gripping like, real high. He's, he's like like cause we're over there. Like like, like we're over there and he's driving like this. He's like yeah, yeah. Getting his it's cigarette out the window. Like, like, doesn't even want to look at us over there and them in the back seat. And he's just pouting. Uh, <laughs> and it's the only way to describe it. And, like, it'll get real quiet for a while. And everybody's kind of waiting for him to do something else. You know, because you don't want to laugh at him because you can tell you've kind of offended a, another adult, right? And then, and then but we're in, screaming, like, Banks! In the same <laughs> so, like, we all know that at this point, we're, we were even texting. We had, like, a three-way <laughs> Sad. <laughs> and like, it, we're all making fun of it, like joking about dying on the way to the pizza place and everything. And like, so we're so the next time he fucks up, I know we're all gonna break out laughing or somebody <laughs> say something. And you're just waiting on it to happen. The next time he like, you know how the, they had those like like speed humps in like residential areas. Well, they, there was kind of like a I don't know like a bar and restaurant type district, and it had those. And he'd hit them so fucking hard, or he would see them coming, or he'd slam on the brakes multiple times. He was just like, Arr! like right on the brakes, everybody leaning forward, like seatbelts actually locking and restricting you. And we're all just like, the fuck? I, just, I couldn't. Dr Jeremy, the guy who used to work for me, like he's doing like, I saw him the other day, like in traffic, like we stopped, talked for 10 seconds. And he was like filthy from work, and, and I was like, "How you doing?" He's like, "Double overtime," and like sped away, <laughs> and like he's working his ass <laughs> off so hard to try to support that baby that he's having uh, in January or February. I don't want any part of that. Wouldn't it be want... amazing if he stepped up? He is. I mean, he's working hard. I had I, I I've hired one of his friends, this guy named Josh, who's eh, admittedly a bit slow witted, but I like that in my help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How so, is Jeremy doing? Ruined no his update. life, you know. He's he's got a, he's just he keeps ruined his life because he's like uh, married with a family. Yeah, and he keeps having those kids. Like he's got so many goddamn kids, really? so many goddamn. I don't even know how many. Wow. Like, like she had one when he married her, and he's had at least three or four more. You got to outnumber like, the original. Surround. Oh my god, what a ruined life, you know. Like like he's just just working so. Oh. Working so hard at like a shit job and just like not making very much money and just just always bumming money from me or my dad and just 
and, and he's just a moron. He's just a moron, Woody. Let me, <laughs> let me, I, I, now that I'm, now that my trial's over and everything, <laughs> he called me. This is about three months ago mm. while I'm awaiting trial mm. and asked me if I knew where to get some weed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in fairness, really not in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking insane? <laughs> All of my lines are tapped. They're listening to this right now. You imbecile. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I'm glad I don't know. <laughs> he yeah. asked you for weed three months ago. <laughs> he called it green. And then like he immediately texts back. Sorry, I think we had a misunderstanding there. I was talking about them organic collard greens that they got out there in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm just like, no, you f just close the. Not, Why wouldn't I'm you just say, like flip oh, ball, I, I, just I like... accidentally, I just meant I needed a loan of some money. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a little better. It's better than collard greens. It is, yeah. They, uh, Nobody's oh, looking for organic collard greens. Organic, yeah, you look like you eat organic collard greens, Jerome. There's just the, I, I just, what an imbecile. I'm like, you realize I'm on federal probation <laughs> awaiting <laughs> trial right now, right? 30 years at stake. You realize this, right? And he's like, oh. And it like dawns on him, uh, you know, like 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 that Zach Galifianak is fucking equations in the air, fucking shit happens. <laughs> but but for him, instead of like trigonometry, it's like one plus two is equals three and like and shit like that floating around in the in Oh, I was so upset about that. That's so funny. Did he ask you if you knew where to get weed? Imbecile. Imbecile. That's I stone cold retardation. It is. Stone, and it's not like he doesn't know. But like what, you know, my situation. Like I talked to him six or eight months ago about everything that was going on. I was like, yeah, I'm hoping we get, we get this wrapped up soon. But blah, blah, blah. And this could happen and that could happen. Just a nightmare, man. Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't do anything silly. You know, I don't, I know you. Don't get don't do anything silly, Jeremy. <laughs> You've got that family over there counting on you, and you probably can't afford a team of lawyers. So don't do anything silly. And he's like, and I thought he said, "Okay, Kyle, I understand what you're saying. Thank you for giving me the heads up." But instead, he just went and and just completely just forgot everything I said. So yeah, he's just. Uh, I, I guess he's doing terribly, but that's See, about par for the course for him. When you said that he ruined his life, I was hoping you were looking at it through the Kyle lens, you know, like happily married, having new children is like the fate worse than death kind of thing. No. But that's not, it's. No, it's worse than that. Um, like, I'm trying to think of somebody I know who's worse like, than <laughs> having a loving family of children. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know a guy. What's worse than that, Kyle? <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> um, like, I know a guy like what you're describing. And, uh, you know, got married he had two kids one of them had like some sort of special needs where he had to have like some sort of serious surgery or something like that and it was like ah, oh, you're talking tough. about me till the very end no no <laughs> and, and and uh and it was like ah it's a rough life but i bet he's happy with the decisions he's made he's he's got a loving family you know he's got funny stories you know he, he's like my daughter got kicked out of preschool i was like what happened she's a biter she's she was <laughs> She bit everybody there, and when the teacher <laughs> asked her why she was doing it, she bit the teacher, and so now uh, she's staying with me. Isn't that right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> just like just got a hand on her forehead. <laughs> yeah. so, so now we stay. Uh -huh. <laughs> like got that eleven year old all from over Barry. Yeah, I just but no, that but no. Um, oh, that's a great episode. The bit really with the funny. little I ninja girl. The, season the other night, yeah, that was Fuck really. Fuck yeah, funny. man. Barry's great. So, but but no, he's fucked his life up in the in the sense that like terrible wife like like mm -hmm. real piece of shit person like leeches off the the, the government and uh you know real controlling and, and like 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 you know always it, i feel like you should have your time away from your wife and she shouldn't need you there all the time and she shouldn't always know where the fuck you are if you're a trustworthy man like it's one thing if you've cheated on her before or something like that but mm -hmm. jeremy hasn't done that and she's just, his phone will blow up and you can just hear her brow beating him and be like, when are you coming home? When are you going to fucking be here to watch these fucking children? Oh, that sounds like hell on her. Yeah. And you're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> all right, then you better. And, you know, I know he's working like 60, 70 hours a week or something stupid. It's at a very manual labor intensive job, you know, like making whatever fucking gas tanks at a plant or some shit like that. It's just like. Fuck, don't you ever wish your house would burn down and they'd all be in it? 
like like get a fresh start on this life. <laughs> like I, I mean, that's what I would hope for every fucking day. That I, I that he's a he's a volunteer fireman. I, I'm, I, like mm-hmm. like I, I bet I bet the hose doesn't connect just right. If that house ever catches on fire, it's gonna burn to the fucking ground. Because <sighs> just just I couldn't imagine being in that same position. Like like I love my independence. I, I I love my freedom to do just about whatever I want, for the most part. You know, a few yeah, restrictions within state lines. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. I could ask for permission. Perhaps they would allow me to travel, but but you know, at a, at a, at a given date. Um, but 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 nobody's browbeating me and fucking telling me what I can and can't do. And I can stay up fucking late if I want. If I want to leave the mess in the living room, I leave the fucking mess in the living room, and I'll shit in whichever toilet I want. I feel like he can't. He doesn't have these little liberties that I'm talking about right now. I, I couldn't. He's got his like, designated shitting bathroom. Probably she doesn't care for it in her bathroom. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I doubt they have more than one bathroom. It doesn't matter. What do we have here, Kyle? Oh, the thumb. Oh, the thumb. Tell us the story of Jeremy's thumb. Jeremy, Richard, go to his Twitter to look at it. Uh, Kyle's yeah, Twitter. Yeah. Under. It's a very brutal pic. Yeah, Jeremy got a uh, a job at some sort of a factory, uh, some sort of factory job, and he got his thumb stuck in a metal bender. Jesus! And, and it bent his thumb as if it were a piece of metal, wow. and it oh didn't work God. out very well. And he, let me read the text to you because it's kind of gross, and I'm not sure I I remembered exactly. Oh. I was trying to get him. Uh, by the way, I tried really hard to get him to come on tonight, but he's got that girlfriend that's like. Ma- running his life now and, and like he's got to take her he's got to take a kid that's not he's got to take her child to school early in the morning so he couldn't come I he's like also the missing visual a of him texting with his bloody stump yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh. oh that's why he asked if I would call him instead of texting I was like nah man I don't want to call him <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile his co- the front of his phone is just covered in blood <laughs> Why did I download oh Swipe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks uh, like not. So is, not, is this thumb going to be okay? Is it going to... Like, it's um, not going to be okay, very apparently. But is it going to be functional well, again? They've been, they've been putting, like, uh, dip spit on it and, like, wrapping it up in some tobacco leaves. So I think it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, is this it's the Jeremy I know? On it. Yeah, yes, yeah, Jeremy, you know. Yeah. Wait, so you're telling me he gets hurt like that on a job not working for you. Right. That's that's irony right there. <laughs> <laughs> he uh he fucked it up. He said something about quote like tearing the meat away from the bone. Um I don't know if like maybe the bottom part of his thumb was like ripped away as like from the bone or something. I don't know what like maybe like rip, like the all the flesh off the bone from like the bottom. Like a baby back rib. Yeah, like a baby back rib, oh. or and you know the, the 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 nail is obviously like broken in half. Yeah, and, like, I couldn't even tell up. what the gray thing was. Was that the nail like pulled out of there? Yeah, yeah, it's all fucked oh. up. I haven't seen it, nor do I want to. Like he, it's it's fucked up. Like I said, I tried to get him come on tonight, and he was he was like, rawr, 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 my girlfriend. <laughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> is he is he on painkillers or nope, anything? No, nope, that's just Jerry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, he's, just, he's just incomprehensible naturally. <laughs> And then I immediately turn and fire, and it's a fucking mushroom cloud I make <laughs> down in the valley. Because I, it really was like a ton of explode, not a ton, but a lot of explosives mm. and ten gallons, five gallons of diesel, five gallons of gasoline. So you get the mixture of dark orange and bright yellow fire with like that's cool. That's that's the time that me and Jeremy were making the explosive charge, and he was like, "What would happen uh, if this went off right now?" And I, I'm like. You'd never fucking know it. <laughs> You'd never, <laughs> never fucking know it, dude. This is 25 pounds of high velocity This or, or low velocity. This is the equivalent of like 200 pounds of tannerite that, we, that we're sandwiching in the making an Oreo of with two five-gallon gasoline containers. Like, And then we're duct taping the fuck out of it like till it's like a solid, mm-hmm. solid mass. I don't think like one roll of, duct, roll of duct tape. I think eight rolls of the most expensive duct tape you can buy. Until it's the just most expensive duct tape you can find. Gorilla, that gorilla tape stuff that oh, you yeah, can barely yeah. tear. You have to use a knife to like cut it when you want to tear it. Like that, w- it made a crater. It made a crater down in the down in the valley. That was nuts. You, you yeah, should have been like, if it goes off, you just gotta get running. 
Yeah, like I always knew like exactly what the danger factor was, and it was just like I was like, look, we're we're making money here. Like like this is, this is what we're doing for a living. If I die, I die, but we're gonna do it. It's gonna get done. All right, we're, we're, I'm not gonna pussy out. There's no way I go home without doing this today. So might as well just push all that out of your head. Like don't be afraid of it. And that's just what I do. I just put myself in a mindset where like this is happening. It's like if you're getting a shot at the doctor. There's no reason to be like fucking scared. Like it's happening. There's no way you're leaving here without this shot. It's happening. So why like even bother worrying about it or, or like giving a shit about it? It's like being afraid of your ultimate death that we're all going to face sometime. It, there's no reason to be thinking about that. Just fucking live your life. And that's how we what we do on a shoot. But, but it came quickly apparent to me that like Jeremy had no clue ever how much danger he was actually in. Like I would know. I you know, <laughs> and, and I do some dog. calculation. We do those. We sometimes we're like, hey, for a hundred thousand dollars, would you do this or that? And like we'd all do some ridiculous shit, right? For a hundred thousand dollars. Sometimes that's what I was getting paid to make a video. So it's like, yeah, of course I have no issue standing in front of this fucking car that's about to explode. I'm getting paid eighty five thousand dollars today. Yeah, Jeremy's have- getting paid minimum wage, <laughs> <laughs> and he's right there, you know, beside me, like with no clue how dangerous this is. But I just told him to do it, and he went out there and did it. And like I was paying him in like Red Bull and cigarettes at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great deal for you. An amazing yeah, this video. I am running low on the Red Bull and cigarettes for my slave. I saved so much money over the years by employing people like Scott and Jeremy. I paid Scott well, but Jeremy got minimum wage most of the time and cigarettes and Red Bull. That was the deal. Like he would go on a cross country trip broke. He would show up to go to Texas and not and have twenty dollars in his pocket, and we're gone for a week. Like he knows going in, Kyle's paying for everything. Kyle, Kyle's got my food. Kyle's got my cigarettes, my Red Bull, anything I need. Kyle's got, and I had no problem with that because he's the guy that holds explosives <laughs> while you shoot them out yeah. of his hands. Like no one else is going to do that for any amount of money because they're not retarded. He should have hmm. should have really asked for more. I'd have found somebody else. There's plenty yeah. of dummies in that neck of the woods that would have done that shit. For, like, 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 there was there was a bunch of dudes that like thought that shit was cool and were watching on YouTube, and they would have like not just like random people, like people that were in like my sort of circle of uh, of like friends and associates. Like, there was a lot of people who were always like, "Hey, I could come with you on one of those trips, man. I, you don't have to pay me anything. I just want to go." And be like, "Yeah, man, there's really not enough room in the truck, but if Jeremy or Scott can't come, you're in. If one of them that, dies, you're on the bench." That's what I was thinking in my head. Like, like I always thought that there was like a a ten percent chance that one of these days Jeremy doesn't make it. That's such a high percent to die. <laughs> and like, 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 <laughs> like, like, this isn't like that that thing that time where we asked Wings what he thought his odds of surviving our survival trip was, and he was like 50 50 50 I'd die on the survival trip, and I'm like, do you know what fifty fifty means? That's a that's a coin flip. That's a paper rock scissors. One in a hundred times, maybe you, you you die. Maybe probably one right. in ten thousand. Right. You know, like like even in for for someone with, with his health conditions, like we're just going off in the woods a little. But there was a ten percent chance that Jeremy didn't wouldn't survive all that. There's the tank destroyer video where we just mocked up a cube of plywood and two by fours and suspended twenty five pounds of explosives in the middle of it, basically making a bomb. And when you shoot it, it sends plywood and two by fours out in a in a bubble, in a sphere of influence, if you will. And I shot it not with a gun, but with a tank destroyer. the The bullet is as big; it's like a log that you would put in your fireplace. It's bigger than that. Wow! You would, if 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 that bullet were a log, you'd be like, ah, it's a little long. I don't know. <laughs> we need to cut it in half before we <laughs> throw it on the fire. We shot it with that, and I remember I'm in the tank, of course. He's sitting on top of the tank with his legs down by my shoulders so that he can pan to me and then pan to the target. And I remember looking up at him to, to like make sure he didn't shake or anything and just seeing shit flying over his head like a cloud of shrapnel. Let's get straight to it. Fire in the hole. There was a bunch of shit like that. Jeremy didn't give a fuck, though. Or he didn't know any better. Either way, it worked out. 
He's a very brave, a very stupid. That's why I tolerated him like stealing stuff from me over the years and like being like lazy that. and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, he stole my $200 glasses that I didn't want to, that were goofy looking anyway that some company gave me for free. Enjoy. You're the guy who sits on top of tanks. <laughs>